following demonstration is showing the Solid Edge Embedded Client running in, Sol in um, Solid Edge ST3. What we're going to look at today is some new functionality as well as some existing functionality for Embedded Client tying Solid Edge to the Team Center or Team Center Express environments. Today we've got ST3 and we've got Team Center Express 5.3 running in this uh, presentation. We're going to take a look at some, some basic management and viewing of information, revising, opening and closing of files. We're also going to take a look at um, using the, the Team Center Structure Editor to actually build an assembly structure, send that out through a workflow where multiple people are working on the design process. So to get started, I've already opened up Team Center Structure Editor and I'm going to create a new assembly. So my new structure or assembly comes in blank and what we're going to do is I've got a custom mower deck that I need to design. So I'm going to create a new assembly that's going to contain all the components and at the top level of the assembly will be a sub-assembly that already contains most of the components. But I have a new wheel that's got to be attached to that object. So this is going to, my assembly structure is going to look something along these lines. This will be my top level and I'm going to create a sub-assembly in place by just selecting the target and selecting create and it creates <coughs> excuse me a new object this object is going to contain an existing wheel and it needs to have a sheet metal bracket to hold it in place so I will go to new which creates another new object this is going to be my bracket but also at the subassembly level I want to use the existing wheel so I'm going to use the add option instead of create and let's go do a quick search and I know that this starts with ASM underbar 05 and I don't remember after that so let's do a wild card. Search runs and I can go through and take a look at my results here. Now by navigating the results I happen to know that it's part number 31 and my preview um, confirms that but I can scroll across here and I can see different columns of information and I can add and remove columns to control what I see. I can also actually change this so that I can make the display look very much like Team Center where I see the item, item revision, and the data set levels of, of information. But for this presentation, basic is fine, and I know that this is the object I'm looking for, so I can simply hit open. We'll give this just a moment as structure is read and fed back into, um, into my structure editor environment. So let's see what we've got. Here's my top level assembly, which is going to, again, be the complete mower deck, and then I've got a sub assembly, which is going to contain this wheel and I have a preview display in it and access to properties and it's going to contain this new sheet metal part. Um, at the top level is where I'm actually going to attach this to the mower deck. So let's go back and add again. I'll do a search and again the same wildcard configuration will bring, bring what I'm looking for. And this is the assembly I'm looking for this time. And of course my search could be more complicated against multiple properties um, rather than just a, a a wildcard search against the, the file name. And we'll give this just a moment and it will continue to load this structure. This structure will take a moment longer. It's significantly larger than my simple wheel with four components. So let's look at what this brings us. Here's our more deck. Now one new feature with SC3 is that we create a high resolution JPEG image now for the um, for assemblies and that definitely is beneficial in this situation. Now, amongst these columns of information that I can modify, uh, similar to the file open process, I can also see color coding information, and this is catching my attention. And if I scroll across and look, this is actually checked out, and it's checked out to um, Mr. Steinberg. Um, if I expand this node, I can see that there's more objects that are checked out and additional information. Now. This tile is my action window, so here's where I grab an assembly and I determine what I'm going to do with components within that, that um, assembly. Over here is what we call our common property dialog box, which is how do I, what properties do I define to the part, which metadata is important to me, and also control um, what item ID, what revision, and what name I want to display. In addition to, uh, to seeing information about the object, here I can control actions. And we just created new objects, so the action, of course, is new. And I just added these, so their action is add. In addition to that, I can go into here and I can do a save as, or I can do a revise, replace, or remove, um, or add, as we, we just did. The, 
the significance to this is that I can not only open up an existing or create a, an entire new assembly, assembly structure, but I can actually revise components in place in here or grab an existing object and save as to a new file name. So I've got the existing geometry and I can build from that point. In this presentation, that's not necessary, so we're going to proceed. Now, I'm using something called smart codes, so I'm going to do assign one object at a time. Um, this is my top level assembly. And what a smart code is, is it's a part number that's got intelligence, essentially. And I can define this through different LLVs or lists of values inside of Team Center. And I can make these so that they're um, cascading or chronological intelligence. Um, in the case of my smart code, all I'm really looking for is the file type, part, sheet metal, assembly, etc. So if I drop my list down, I can say this is an assembly file. Um, next thing I care about is where this is going to be manufactured at. And this is going to be manufactured in, say, Plano, Texas. And I need to assign a unique number. It'll go to the counter and grab the next available number for me. And I can see the item ID assembly is the type. 4 represents Plano. And this is just a unique number. If I go to the next object, and let's do an assign here. And I can do the same thing. Again, this is an assembly. And again, let's uh, go ahead and manufacture or assemble that in Plano, Texas. And we'll take the next number, which is will be 501. And here, let's do an assign. And this time, I will pick this as a sheet metal part. And let's go ahead and fabricate that in Huntsville, Alabama. Now I've completed the information I'm concerned with. Now I'm going to deliver this to a specific folder inside of Team Center. So let's create a new folder. And I'll call this custom. Or deck. And I can copy rather than specify it repeatedly. Everything will deliver to the same folder. Now my item ID has been specified. I'll take the default revision A, but uh, for item name, we're just going to default put in this item number, and I'm going to change that. So this is going to be my custom mower deck, and this is my new front wheel assembly, and this is my front wheel bracket. Now that all of the information has been populated, I can go ahead and tell this to process. When Structure Editor runs, it reads its information into memory, and I can go through and do different what-if scenarios. Um, I don't actually commit to any changes until I run this process command, and now what's going to happen is any item that does not exist inside of Team Center is going to be created, the bombs are going to be created, and when I'm done, I will be looking at the reopening of the existing assembly. So, now that my assembly structure has been defined in Team Center um, Structure Editor, it's been assigned to me um, and I'm already logged into Solid Edge. So, I'm going to go ahead and open up the assembly and create the geometry necessary to, to perform my tasks. Um, I'll do a file open of an existing document. Now, I'm already logged in, so it's not prompting me to do so. And I've already and in the custom mower folder. Um, I don't see any files here, and the reason being is, is that when I create these objects inside of Structure Editor, I haven't actually created a Solid Edge data set. So I'll set my filter to display items that do not contain Solid Edge data sets. Here's my custom mower, and I'll continue to do a file open. Now, since it does not have a Solid Edge data set, I'm prompted, uh, presented with my Solid Edge templates, and this is going to be an assembly. So I can simply select the assembly template and say OK. The f item in item revision has already been created. My upload documents or my common property dialog box is already going to take that new solid file that I just created by selecting the template and upload it to the correct location. Um, now that that assembly is there, it's just a blank assembly, it needs to read the structure and it's going to build the assembly with what has been defined. Because I did use some real components as opposed to some um, virtual or, or non-modeled components. The assembly is been brought up and synchronized and this is dialog box is telling me that there are objects 
added to the solid edge assembly from outside of solid edge and I'm going to accept this and let it go ahead and check out any of those components and populate them with components as defined in in this case team center structure editor okay so let's zoom out a little bit so we can take a look at what we have and let's just rotate the view closer to where I'm going to actually be working um, Let's take a look at our Pathfinder. First you see here is a object that's already been added. This is the subassembly of the uh, of the mower deck. And above it is uh, part number 501, which is the um, the non-modeled subassembly that we defined. And inside of here I can see the actual modeled wheel assembly. And I can see what is going to be my, um, my sheet metal component. So let's make them real parts by doing publish virtual and I'm going to go ahead and publish all of these components. Now, I can have these components as non-modeled components and never publish them. They could be something like paint, grease, or a manufacturing process. But in this case, all of these will be solid edge parts. The assembly is recognized here as an assembly because it does contain a subassembly structure. This component does not have an assembly, so therefore I need to specify what is it going to be. It's a sheet metal part in this case, or it could be a part, or it could be a, an assembly. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And once I say OK, the, the templates are going to be used and it will create my components. It would help if I press the Publish key. Now, once these components are created and ready to be uploaded, here again I can see all of the information because their item ID and their revision has already been defined. It's grayed out so I cannot change it. Um, I would have to do a revised process. I can change the item name if I so choose or specify a data name or a data description. I also see any attributes that I have mapped and the only attributes I have mapped in this case is what's called a cascading LOV. A LOV could be simply a list of options that the user can pick from from a drop down list such as here. Um, this is an assembly so I'm going to pick the assembly. What makes a cascading LOV special is that that as I select something from this list, it determines what LOV should be displayed here. So these are this is the actual list. An assembly can either be purchased or it can be manufactured. It's going to be manufactured. Um, the type here is not applicable in, in this case. And here I can pick a vendor. Or in this case, I have this setup as being suggested, so I can just put in something and use that value. In contrast, what I'll do is instead of using the TSM, the sheet metal part that this actually is, I'm going to go to part. So I've added a little bit more intelligence here. And you see that if I continue on to manufacturing, that I have a different list. Whereas if I had just gone to a sheet metal part, then I can have different options presented to the to the user. And this part will be purchased from Siemens. And I'll tell this OK, and it will go ahead and upload this information into uh, in a Team Center for me, actually creating the data sets, and all of my components become actual solidized components at this point. So let's go ahead and expand these. Now, let me introduce you a little bit to the Pathfinder. Um, the Pathfinder in an unmanaged environment shows you the file name. When you're working in a Team Center environment, then we want to see the object name, which is what we're displaying. And that is the item ID, the revision, and the object name or the item name. I've added, and you can customize this to whatever information is applicable to you, I've added a TC status and I've mapped it so that if there is no status, it's not released or in, in process or anything or in review, then I will show a status of zero. But if it is released, which if we expand here and we can take a look at the, uh, the assembly that is in this case check, checked out to uh, Stainbrook and expand down through here, I can see this component has a different status of um, 60, which means that in, in Team Center Express, this means that it's released, making it read only. Uh, for right now, right now, we won't be concerned with that. I do want to look here. Here's the um, other subassembly that I added, which is the wheel, and I need to make a sheet metal bracket that holds this wheel into place. This is the component that I defined inside a structure editor for this task. So I can double click this to in place activate. And um, we'll rotate around a little bit. I want to look at this from kind of a view about, say, here. Um, 